Good morning and welcome to the entrepreneurial journey with Dave Westcott, Pastor Dave Lundquist, and Heather Vasquez from Next Step Pregnancy Clinic. I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. Yes. Yeah. Good. Perfect. I practiced like five times in front of the mirror. So you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen on screen. Yeah, no, I, I want to do it. The, I want to do it the right way. So just a, a quick introduction for our viewers. Next Step Pregnancy Clinic is in Linwood, Washington, and Heather is the executive director uh, for Next Step. And this is a uh, this is an organization that is just near and dear to my heart. I love Next Step uh, Pregnancy uh, Clinic, and we've been working with you guys for five or six years, something like yeah. that. I can't remember exactly, but it's been a while. And what I love is just that that this group is so ingrained in the local community. And what I love is that any uh, pregnant single woman can go to, to the next step pregnancy clinic and they can get free diaper, free formula, free medical examination, whatever it might be, you know, when they're having that baby. And I just think that that is such an amazing thing for all of the the women out there whether it's in linwood or maybe a different city but just having that resource is awesome and i'm a big believer in giving back to business and so i'm ceo of trans blue evergreen brands and one of the things that we believe in is giving back and i have this thought that if you're in the community but nobody knows you're in the community then what's the point in being in business and so my whole idea behind business and being in business is to give back to amazing organizations like Next Step. And I believe this is truly what I believe. And uh, I, I believe that, you know, we have one shot on earth. We have one shot and that's all we get. And then when we die, it's that's it. That's our shot to eternity. Right. And we get to live there forever. So how we live here really impacts that. And I think in business, one of the best and greatest things that anybody can do with their business is give back and support amazing organizations like yours. And I think that real success and real happiness and real, real gratefulness always comes from being able to uh, give to organizations um, like Next Step. And so I believe that in business, there's nothing more important than you can do than give back. And so I'm a Christian guy. I believe in Christian values. Those things are really important to me. And I think that businesses should be tithing. Like, I believe this. I believe that if you're in business and you have those beliefs, your business should tithe, your business should give back. And I think that places like Next Step are an amazing way to do that. And with Next Step, we donate money. Yes, we do. But we also donate services to Next Step, like, you know, maybe some handyman work or, you know, we've done some annual cleanups or we do the landscaping maintenance for free. So just little things it, that can give back to help the organization are also a big way of giving back. So that's the that's the quick introduction. You know, uh, Pastor Dave Lundquist, he runs Embridge. Embridge is the giving arm of Trans Blue. And so, Heather, why don't you just tell us a little bit about uh next step and what you guys bring what you guys offer what happens there and then we'll just kind of dive in and have a fun a fun conversation yeah uh thanks dave i appreciate the introduction dave and, and pastor dave um well i've been here about three years so you you've been here longer than i have actually with next step um and it's been a wonderful three years um next step pregnancy it's actually next step pregnancy services but it's funny you, you kept saying clinic because we're thinking of changing the name to Next Step Pregnancy Clinic. So I think you already were channeling that, that new name. Um, <laughs> so we're actually on our 25th year. Um, this wow. year is our 25th anniversary. So we're going to celebrate that. Uh, Next Step's been around since 1998. Um, and it was started by a, a couple of Catholic gals uh, in a tiny little, gosh, one room office. I think it was over in Lake City Way. I think there was a pet shop above the store. And all they had were, uh, you know, some diapers and, and wipes and clothes and things like that. And it was very kind of a closet size little, little room. And we've just since expanded and moved to different areas. Um, it's always been in the north end, but uh, we've moved up to, you know, at Shoreline. And then we we're in another location in Linwood. And as we've moved around, we were able to expand to more medical clinic stuff. So we, we had a volunteer medical director um, that came on board back on I believe it was 2010 um, and he just had it on his heart to, to help 
um, expand our services to include ultrasound. So without him, we couldn't possibly have done it because you need to have a you need to have a doctor <laughs> overseeing you to do any of this. So he's the reason that we're allowed to do any of the things we're doing medically. Um, so he came on board at 2010, and in 2018 they moved to the location we're at now, here on the corner of 196th and, and 64th Avenue West. It's a great location. It's it's about a block off 99, and it's uh, on bus line. It's just it's very bright and clean, and uh, we just you know we're going to be getting paving done. It's just a really great location. It was donated to us. That's another great story uh, that I should point out. Is there was a guy. Um, not not too different from you, Dave, um, who, who made some good choices, had a really great business going, was doing really well financially, and went to his pastor and said, I, I want to do something with my money, um, pro-life, pro what, what can I do? And so somehow or another, he got connected with Kathy, who was the previous director, and he, he bought us the building. So we, wow, which, wow. that's pretty big. I mean, we have no mortgage or rent. We own it, you know, full on. It's ours. And all because this guy wanted to give back all because he had something on his heart and he'd been blessed, uh, blessed financially and wanted to, wanted to give back. Um, so great guy, uh, cornerstone housing up in, up in the North end, if anyone's interested, wonderful man. So yeah, that is, that's a huge weight off because before that, of course we had rent. Um, and it was a big chunk, uh, since we're completely donor run, uh, no state or federal funding whatsoever. Um, all of our stuff is just completely donor, whoever would like to give us money. That's how we pay for everything. So without not having to pay any kind of rent or mortgage has been a huge blessing so that we can spend it on other stuff. Um, so we've, again, I got here in 2020. So I decided to walk through the door on probably the worst, worst year <laughs> here in Washington. Um, I'd been at University of Washington Hospital for, gosh, 18 years or so and was really not really not doing well there. Uh, it's a good hospital or it was Northwest Hospital. So that, that it was a good hospital when it was Northwest Hospital. Um, but it just wasn't, I wasn't feeling um, that I was doing what God wanted me to do. I mean, it was bringing a paycheck, but that's, again, that's not the most important thing. And so I decided to volunteer at a pregnancy clinic and I just happened to walk in when the executive director was deciding to retire. So it was just kind of God, God just put me right where I needed to be, right when I needed to be there. Um, wow. So I got the job. <laughs> and uh, amazingly, I don't, I had management experience, but I've, I've never run a, a nonprofit before. And it's been a whirlwind of things you'd never think about. <laughs> they just come up and wow, I have no experience with that. Um, but I have a wonderful team. So I've been able to, uh, we've been able to make some really great programs happen. And I've really learned a lot. Um, so yeah, that first year it was, was kind of tough, but again, we have so many wonderful donors. They're just individuals. Um, churches don't necessarily give us money. Like I think people think, well, a church you know gives you all the money. They don't. What it is, is their people do. So, and the church will maybe sponsor what's called a baby bottle drive. Um, and so again, it's not a check from the church. It's a check from the people. Um, and sure. then we've just got tons of individual donors who, I got to say, probably go to church because I feel like you can't, you got to, you got to have something good on your heart to want to give away your money, um, you know, to something like us. I mean, they must be feeling like it must be on their heart to help us out. So we've got, and we've got some businesses in the area like Trans Blue, some wonderful businesses. I'll give a shout out to Mountain Goat Roofing here in Linwood. Man, those guys, they're, they're wonderful too. They, they give all the time. They just, they, again, they're a, a blessed business and they want to, give back just like just like trans blue um so wonderful businesses we've gotten some grants here and there um, but it, i would say it's oh, enormously uh just individual donors and it doesn't even have to be very much we have people that give 10 bucks a month 50 bucks a month you know 15 bucks a month and it, it really adds up so somehow we manage uh we always manage well we all know how we manage it's him. that's right um yeah that's great. i know i'm talking about a minute <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we love that. New programs too going on, so I feel like it's a it's a really record year for next step. Uh, we're in the uh, middle of well, we're nearing the end of accreditation, um, so that's a huge feat. I mean, that's to be uh, recognized by the medical community, so to speak, as a 
as an actual medical clinic. And I know there's, wow. that's been a, a big deal. Um, it's a lot of work to do and it just holds us accountable for medical excellence because that's what we've got. Um, and it gives us kind of the, I hate to use the word, but kind of the clout that we need um, to be uh, part of the, part of this medical community around here. So hospitals and like Swedish admins and, you know, all the, all the clinics around will now refer their patients to us because they feel like, well, okay, you're not just kind yeah. of a on the corner doing who knows what you actually have medical professionals. We have nurses, sonographers, uh, we're doing early diagnostic ultrasounds, uh, which have, they start at about six weeks up to about 17 wow. weeks, uh, do pregnancy testing. We're about to open our STD clinic. I mean, we're just, really taking off in the, the medical world. And we're not going to go too far because we don't want to drift away from our mission, which our mission is is pregnancy care and prenatal care and care for the women uh, and the men that are that need our help. Um, so that we don't want to go too far into medical. So we feel like these mm -hmm. things are all uh, needed for the, the young gals that come in here. Um, and it's all a chance for our nurses and our staff to plant seeds. Um, so yeah. we meet every woman where they are when they come in, doesn't matter their income or zip code or marital status, or they could come from wherever. We have absolutely no restrictions on who comes in. Um, and again, everything is free. So you come on in and if we've got a service or a supply that you need, then great. Um, that's, that's what we do all day, every day. And again, we've got volunteers, we've got some staff. Um, most of the gals that come in, I would say uh, want to parent. Um, I don't think, I think there's kind of a misconception that everyone coming in here is thinking it's an abortion clinic or maybe they want one. And it's like, that's, that's really not accurate. Um, uh, we have a lot of families coming in. They just want to see how far along they are. A lot of families coming in that maybe the gals had a history of miscarriage and um, for, well, I'm the only woman right here. <laughs> I'm the only one who can get pregnant in this conversation. I know it's a little bit. <laughs> A lot of um, anxiety when you're you're newly pregnant, especially with your first, or especially if you've had a history of of loss for your your babies. And so, if you can't get in to see your OB till 20 weeks, and you're just you just want to make sure everything's okay. That's what we're here for, and we get a lot of that. So it's yeah. there's no no coercion. There's nothing like that. It's just a, a medically accurate procedure that our that our sonographers can do to tell you. Yes, your baby has a heartbeat. Yes, your baby is where he or she is supposed to be in your in your your uterus. You know. Yeah. Can I say one thing? I, can I say one thing? Yeah. Listen, we I just had a baby, and when my oh, wife yeah. had the baby, yeah, I felt a little bit of anxiety too. I'm just going to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm yeah, you're right. I don't want to downplay the anxiety. No, no, no. no, 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 no anxiety too. I, I'm just yeah. teasing. I felt a little bit of anxiety too. But I know that her anxiety far outweighs my anxiety. But yeah. I felt it too. I'm, I'm glad you did. That meant you were part of it. And that meant you were partnering with your with, with your wife the way you should have been. Um, yeah. Sadly, we've got a lot of gals coming in who don't have that, Dave. So your wife's very lucky. Thank you for being that. Um, they, you know, they don't always have that. And so that's awesome. another reason we're here is they need someone to talk to. They need some support and they need non-judgment. They just want to come in and yeah. get some good information. Now we do have some gals come in that are, that are looking to get an abortion or they're thinking about it because it is an option. It's not an option for me. Um, but for many people, it is an option. Um, of the three options, there's parenting, abortion, or adoption. That's kind of uh, what that is. So not everyone coming in here is coming from the same maybe faith base that, that I come from or that a lot of the, the staff come from. So that really is an option for them and they want to know what's that about? Should I go that route? And one yeah. of the main things I want to point out is our nurses don't tell anyone what to do. They don't say, don't have an abortion. You need to parent. You need to this. They give them the facts. This is, these, this is what happens in abortion. These are the procedures. These are your your options. If you want to go that way, these are your, your other options. They give them factual information so that they can make that informed choice. And again, we don't know what choice they always make. Maybe they don't come back and see us, but I say most of them do. A lot of them come back for that ultrasound. A lot of them come back for repeat ultrasounds. And I feel like if you're coming back for a repeat, you want to see the baby again, something inside you wants to check that out again. Yeah. Um, yeah, but again, I think most of the women coming are, are are not necessarily abortion minded. They might be vulnerable, and I say that meaning that 
most women don't want to have an abortion. It's usually a partner, a parent, a friend or friends that are kind of pushing them that direction. And they just need. Yeah, there's. Yeah, Heather. Heather, thank you just for coming on and sharing. I mean, you're you're uh, you know. You do such a great job. Your team does such a great job. Your facility is beautiful. Uh, for those of you guys that are out there listening, I mean, this is a first-rate facility and a first-rate team. You walk in, it feels like a medical center. And, you know, thank you just for putting forward, you know, into the community uh, uh, an organization like this that is pro-life and that does care about the next generation. Um, Heather, just give us, thank you so much again for just sharing all the details, but how many, how many people walk in, uh, you know, on any given week, month, year, do you guys serve? Because I think a lot of people don't know the scope of what you guys do. Uh, you know, I, I always work from a, a annual kind of number. Everybody always asks me about month and week. And I always feel bad because whenever I'm doing reports and statistics, I'm always looking annually. Um, sure. So I know that like in 2022, for example, it was, it was gosh, 3,700 3, visits wow. we had and about uh, well over a thousand of those were unique visits. And that means it was uh, a new person or a new family that came in. Um, so we're, I would say most of the people coming in are for our supplies. So we very, we rely heavily on donations from people for all the wonderful clothes and diapers and wipes and formula and, and, and toys and books. We have a lot of families coming in for that. Cause I mean, I've been there. It's, it's, you know, you're three days from your paycheck and you've run out of diapers. Um, that's what we're there for. I mean, we've all been there. What do you do? You know, or you're just trying to, you know, Clothes are expensive. I, we get so many nice clothes too. We have a lot of really great donors that give us not only practically brand new clothes, some of them are just brand new. And that's really mm -hmm. wonderful to be able to go into our little boutique and see a nice, a nice sleeper that has a tag still, it's brand new. And to feel good that you can get that nice, clean, brand new sleeper for your, for your child. That's a really good feeling. Um, wow. Nothing against thrift stores and secondhand. I mean, we, that stuff works too, but I got to say it does give you a good feeling when you, you have a hard time providing for your family and it's, it's always a struggle and to find that you can get something new and nice and clean that hasn't been worn by, you know, five other people or 20 other people to give to your child. So thank you to all of our donors that donate tons of clothes. So most of our, I would say, I mean, we are a medical clinic, but I, I would say our numbers a lot are a lot of the supplies, a lot of people coming in for social services, like, you know, resources, um, referrals to various uh, doctors or counsel, or uh, we even have an auto clinic that one of our groups does, and they'll do free oil changes and things like that for gal for, for anybody, really. Um, and that's a pretty big deal. I mean, especially if you're a single woman and you, yeah, you're lucky to have a car, but then the next thing you know, you got the oil change and those can add up. You know, they're not going to be below 60, most likely. So we've got a great group up in the north end that that helps with that as well. So if we don't have what you need, we know someone or some group that does. There's so many wonderful groups in Washington. Is that the ahead, Abundant please. Life Network? Yeah, uh, Abundant Life. They're, they're the yeah. ones who brought us all together, actually. They're, uh, yeah, they're, they bring everybody together, all sorts of maternity housing, adoption, uh, again, the auto clinic shelters i mean everything you need they managed to sort of get us all in a hub so that we're all not only there to support each other and pray together because we're all in the same boat and it's been a, it's a struggle and it's nice to be able to talk to each other but not only that well if i don't have it then i know someone else does or i know where else you can go for what you need um so and it's all connected to the family it's all connected to helping people have good lives uh be able to be with their children um, make good decisions. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all connected in some way. So most of our people are for supplies. I believe our medical side is really starting to take off uh, just because of the amount of ultrasounds we're able to offer during the week now between our, our nurses and our sonographers. And again, we're about to start offering STD testing and treatment, which, you know, that according to the Snohomish County Health Department, there's that's really, really on the rise, um, getting some mm -hmm. of the, the sexually transmitted diseases. And to me, it, it's, a, it's a great way to get people in 
to be able to not only, you know, do the test and maybe it's negative. Great. Then you can have a conversation about, Hey, great, you're negative this time. What can we do differently? Maybe to, to stay away from that sort of lifestyle, or maybe you're positive. We can help them get into treatment or get whatever they need from the pharmacy to help take care of that. But again, it's all about planting seeds of how do you want your life to go right now? I mean, what are, you know, where can you go where you can safely talk to somebody, get facts about um, sexually transmitted diseases and have somebody to talk to about maybe to make different choices because those, you know, those can be serious and they're, they're not great. And you're obviously, you know, maybe some decisions are not going well and that's why you're in the predicament you're in. And I feel like we're able to at least get in there and, and tell them, Hey, you're worth more than that. You're better than that. We can make different choices. Um, and our, our last program they're about to start as well um, is the abortion pill reversal. What you mentioned, uh, Dave, the gal that was at our gala last year um, was a, a, she's a perfect example of somebody that went through the abortion pill reversal and it worked and she was able to, to be with her child. And we want to offer that as well. So that if a woman is in a position where maybe she's taken the first pill, it's a two pill process. So maybe she's taken the first pill and has changed her mind and is just desperate to reverse what what's happening. It is possible to do that. And uh, our doctor would be able to prescribe what's called progesterone, which is a naturally occurring hormone in a woman, um, to be able to prescribe it at the pharmacy, get your body flushed with the progesterone, and maybe, in, in a lot of really great cases, be able to to save the baby. I don't want to put it as bluntly as that, but that's really what it is. Give the baby yeah. what he or she needs to continue thriving. It doesn't always work. Um, I think the latest statistic is about 65 to 67% of the time it works, which that's a pretty big number. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a big number. So we want to be able to offer that um, to anybody that is in that predicament, because I can't even imagine being that way, realizing you, you've gone on a path that leads to death, really. And you know, what, can you stop it? And there, there is a way to maybe, maybe stop it. We want to be part of that, especially in Washington with the rise of chemical abortions. Um, I feel like that's going to become a, a lot more prevalent that that service that we offer. So I'm glad we're mm. doing it. Yeah. I love that. I yeah. think that's, uh, I think that's, I think that's fantastic. You mentioned uh, mountain goat roofing. I, yeah. uh, I sat with them at the table. We sat at the same table. Yeah. At the gala. Yeah. Mr. Klein. And, uh, they're great people. I think I bought a six hundred dollar pie, and I think they bought an eighteen hundred dollar pie yeah. or whatever it was. Yeah. Like the, the, the champion was, table the was, was crazy. Was right? awesome. so He's awesome just, uh, when he gives us when he gives us the, a check. He always writes uh, uh, God's government in the notes area. It's it's hilarious. I love it. That, that's that's good guy. God's government. Good guy. Yeah. And Beersford Booth, they uh, they're yeah. the law firm down in Snohomish County. They do uh, they do a lot too. They're one of they're one of the big sponsors too. Definitely, uh, Bill, who's a part of that that law team, was our board president for a lot of years. He just recently stepped down um, from our board, but he's still kind of our legal counsel. Uh, yeah. yeah, great guy. Awesome mm -hmm. team, right? Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome people. And I learned some things too. Like I I didn't I you know it's it was cool how you expanded on it. Like it doesn't matter if you know, you're married or single or whatever, like the relationship status doesn't matter. And anybody can come in from any, you know, walk of life. And I, it's next step pregnancy services, but the clinic is something that's offered. And so yeah. I just, the learning, uh, you know, for me is just really cool. And and what we do is like, we're building up treasure in heaven, right? It says the, yeah. in the Bible, it says, don't build up your treasure on earth, but build it up in heaven. And so what I love about what next step pregnancy services does I just love the fact that we're saving babies. Like very much so. And not only babies, saving thing. moms. Um, yeah, moms. We're yeah, very yeah. much into the love them both. I think there's that that feeling of well, you just want to save babies and forget the the poor mom who has to carry the baby. And it's like that's so far from the truth. Our nurses spend so much time with these gals. Um, we 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 love and care for them. We want to yeah. we want to help them. We want to we want to there's so much hugging. Sometimes our Nurses are in there for, gosh, hour, hour and a half. That's another good thing about our clinic is, I mean, we have appointments, but you know what? If that gal needs more time, then more time is given. I mean, there's, they're, not, they're not a number. Uh, they don't rush through any of those appointments. So sometimes they're in there for a long time. Um, and it's, yeah, it's really, really important for people to know that the, the woman and the man, when he's in there, when we hope to get him in there, 
they're part of this whole thing. They're needed and sure. essential. Yeah. Yeah. Heather, with uh, such negative media out there, I was actually, I watched a TV show last night and it was amazing to me how pro-abortion they were and women's rights. And then with Roe, Wade, uh, v. Roe v. Wade, you know, yeah. being overturned and just all of the, almost the hate out there. Um, what have you guys been able to do to, I mean, share the opposite message of, you know, you guys are not a hate organization. You guys are actually loving on our community. I mean, things like this obviously help. Um, yeah. How else yeah. can the community can the community be involved and hear your story? Uh, really just spreading the message. Um, I think that there's a, a website called uh, fakeclinics.com and there's a lot of clinics like mine um, and some of the other pregnancy resource clinics that are on that list. Um, and it's just so false. And it, it's amazing. They can kind of put you wherever. I mean, a lot of them are accredited clinics. I mean, it's strange that you would put an accredited clinic on a, on a fake clinic list. But um, Washington is hard. It's a hard state to be in for this. I feel like God, I, I got to pat myself on the back a little because God must think very highly of me to have stuck me <laughs> here right now in Washington. I mean, I guess I must be doing something good. For me. He must like. Um, so it's, yeah, it's been, it's very isolating sometimes in Washington. But what's good about a place like Abundant Life is then you're not alone. There are so many more yeah. pro-life people in Washington than you think, and they're getting louder. I got to say, yeah. uh, a lot of times there's a lot of silence, you know, because it's, it's a hard conversation, um, especially if you have family members or friends that feel so strongly. But people are really starting to come out of the woodwork on how they really, you got to take a side in this. This is no longer, it's, well, to me, it was never an issue of you could be on the fence. But for some people, um, you know, they weren't sure. But it's kind of at the point of you need to pick a side here. Kind of as Jesus said, you're either with me or you're against me. There's no middle there's no lukewarm on this. Um, and I feel like the warriors are really coming out in Washington and various forms like trans blue, like mountain goat, like um, all the, gosh, the, all the Catholic churches here in Washington have been fantastic. Um, a lot of the, uh, we're getting to know a lot of, I'm, I happen to be Catholic and I'm, I'm getting to know so many pastors at some of the, um, at the non-Catholic churches that I never would have met before that have uh, decided, you know, they've said, look, we're, we need to get our congregations as part of this too. Um, so what the, what the public can do really is spread the word about places like ours that of what really goes on in here. I think there's a real huge misconception about what happens. And I think the media and the people on the other side, if you want to call them that, you know, they spread a lot of lies and a lot of misinformation. And the only way that you're going to find out the truth is coming in to actually go to these places and see what really happens. But none of them ever want to come in. You know that they are we're actually a medical clinic um people aren't just kind of dressing up as doctors it is a medical clinic um nobody's being coerced or dragged in here it's very clear on our website and and all of our marketing materials that we don't we don't perform or offer abortions or refer for them so there's not it's not unclear what services we do and don't do um and so what we we just continue doing what we're doing back in was it well yeah last year in may when we got vandalized um, one of the best, I mean, it was pretty bad, but one of the best pictures I have of that day is the broken window next to the open sign. And it was like, we stayed open that whole day. Nothing stopped us from continuing to do our work and nothing stopped the people from coming in. You know, they, when you need something, you need something. When you need help, you need help. So nothing stopped us. We kept going. Um, Trans Blue was able to help us out. Thank you, Dave, for all your guys. Nate, I think, was the one who did all of our windows. Um, we called Trans Blue. They were right on it to help us with the, the spray paint and the broken windows and everything. And, you know, we went about our business. <laughs> so, uh, again, just get out there and tell people what happens at these clinics that we're, we're there to help women. With, we're there to save babies, too, certainly. We're there to help the fathers. There's so much good happening in these, these places. And to, to tear these places down and, and put out misinformation or try to get the state to shut us down or regulate us. I mean, all you're doing is harming the women that you say that you care about, you know, yeah. and I mean, I'm going to point it out, but the choice thing, if a woman chooses to come here, let her have that choice. I mean, if people choose life or if, even if they, if they choose to come here, let them choose to come here. Don't make Amen. the choice for them. Yeah. I love it. 
What's uh, what's the biggest need that you guys have today? Uh, gosh, <laughs> that's a big one. Uh, gosh, we get so many. Well, if you want to buy supplies, if some, if it's on your heart to to get uh, you know, supplies for families, we always need wipes and size six diapers. For some reason, the size six diapers and the wipes go really fast. Um, so if you just happen to be at, at Walmart or Costco or wherever, uh, you know, grab a box of diapers. That's always welcome, always helpful. Um, during the formula shortage, which is still kind of going on, we did pretty well with that. That's always helpful. Um, on the flip side, we've got, you know, getting breast pumps and breast pump accessories and things like that is helpful too, because we do like to encourage um, breastfeeding, but you know, you, you do what you need to do. So if you need formula, we want to be able to offer that too. I'm not going to say not money because that would, I would be lying. We could always use money because uh, again, we're totally donor run. So um, we rely completely on, on everybody for money, whether it's to, you know, pay our power bill or, you know, buy paper for our printers or our internet or, you know, to, to pay our nurses, to pay me. We do rely on that money. So if you monetarily, we always use that. Um, if anybody wants to volunteer their time, we have a, wonderful volunteers here. I, it's such a great place to volunteer. And I'm always amazed at our volunteers because they don't even have to be here. You know, they just want to be here. You know, and I think there, there's something to be said for working with people that that are volunteering because they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They're doing it because God has put them in, in that direction to do it. You can bundle diapers, you can sort clothes, you can, you know, stamp mailers. There's so much to do here. And it's a great environment. You see lots of kids. There are a lot of kids and babies coming in, especially newborns. So if you like looking at babies, <laughs> you know, they're very, very beautiful that come in here. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very, it's a very relaxed environment. I mean, it's a, it's a nice, and we, we need to have at least two people at all times to be open. And luckily, uh, luckily we do pretty well. And during the first part of COVID, um, it was thanks to our volunteers that we were able to stay open because so many of the staff or so many people were out because of that or family members. We would have had to close if we didn't have our volunteers because there needed to be two people. So without yeah. them, we would have been done for that year anyway. So um, we're always looking for more volunteers. Again, if you don't ha have money, I get it. I'm there. But if you'd like to give your time, uh, yeah, we're always looking for more volunteers. And it's a great environment. And it's a great way to kind of boots on the ground for this movement. So you can see what really happens in here and accurately be able to share that. Yeah. So, That's uh, awesome. Heather, give us... Uh... Give us, you know, your website and how to contact. I mean, volunteers are great. I know how important those are. How to, you know, if somebody wants to volunteer time or they want to give money or they want to drop off supplies, give us those details. Yeah, um, we're in, drop off supplies anytime we're open. So Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Just come on in. Yep. We accept everything except for like a full-size crib mattress or crib, mostly because uh, just liability purposes and we don't have a lot of room. Um, and our, a lot of our, our clients don't have room to take it home um, or car seats that are older. Um, everything else, we, we definitely accept. Drop that off whenever you, whenever you can when we're open. Uh, the best website to go to to get all of our the news, everything we do, volunteer applications, um, all the different churches and organizations like you guys that we work with. Uh, we also have blogs and events and things. Go to nssupport.org. So nssupport.org is the best place to go to donate money, to see what campaigns are going on, to download a volunteer application and get that filled out and sent on over. Come in for a visit anytime. We have no problem with people coming on in for tours. Um, so if you happen to be in the area and just want to stop in and check, check us out, come on in. Um, but yeah, that's the best website to go to. Our client website um, is nextstepnw.com. And you can donate on that one as well. And that's our our website that talks about our services. It talks about our, our clinic and what we do um, and all of our frequently asked questions about records and just various medical things. So that's that's the client website. Definitely check that out. Um, and then the support website is for anybody that just wants to go a little deeper um, into next step, either, whether volunteering or getting their church involved or you know having us come to a, a group to speak on what we do. Uh, having a school do a diaper drive or a wipey drive. There's so many ways to get involved. So nssupport.org is a, a good place to go. Um, give us a call. Uh, our phone number is on there. Uh, email me. I always give out my email and everybody says I should give out the general one. But 
I always just do mine because I don't know. So it's Heather at nextstepnw.com. So Heather at nextstepnw.com. Email me any kind of questions. I feel like I'm always on my email, so I'll get to it quickly. <laughs> so, <laughs> great. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. also so if, if oh go ahead. Sorry, Dave. I was just gonna say if anybody wants to give uh via the Embridge uh website, Embridge Global uh dot Embridge.global, a hundred percent of what they give to next steps will go to next steps. So uh we want those that uh want to give through uh our website as well. We'll go straight to straight to next steps. Thank you, Pastor Dave. And you guys are, you're, we have a great m list of commitment donors, monthly donors, and Enbridge is on there. Um, there's a lot of people that have really, uh, it's great to give one time or whenever you can, but we have a lot of a lot of donors who have faithfully decided, you know what, every month on this day, we're going to give a bit, and they've kept with us. They've been unfailing like Enbridge. So I thank you for those, those commitment donors. That's a real uh, blast of encouragement when you have those kind of donors. Good. Awesome. So can we do a matching gift or something like that on the call? Like if, uh, if some folks want to donate and they want to, and they want to, uh, give as well, let's say to the end of the week, if, if people want, can watch this or you can push it out to your social channels as well, but match up to $3,000 in gifts. So if you have people that want to give and people that give through and they just mention Embridge or trans blue on their note, and then we'll match up to three thousand dollars of gifts and help with, you know, those uh, those pumps and those diapers and those size sixes and those wipes and yeah. whatever it might be, cash, whatever we can do. But can we do that, Dave? Let's do it. Yeah, that so up to three thousand dollars. That would be very yeah, awesome. Let's, do it. Thank you so much. let's push it out on the social and let's see if we can raise some money and let's see if we can help support this amazing cause. Thank Amen. you very much, guys. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Well, that concludes our time for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dave Westcott. Follow me on LinkedIn. Follow me on Facebook. Follow Next Step. Follow uh, Dave Lundquist on the same platforms. Check us out. If you like this, give it a share. Give it a like. Share it with your social network. We're here to change the world. That's our mission, and we're able to do that one step at a time with amazing organizations like Next Step. Uh, Heather, Dave, thank you guys so much for joining me on the call. It was a pleasure to spend time with you. Thank you very much, Thanks, Dave. Dave. Thank you, Pastor Dave. Thank you yeah, very thank much, you. Guys. Bye. Bye.